welcome. This certainly has been a valuable and enjoyable conference. I hope you all have enjoyed it as much as I have. My name is Michael Shaw. A little bit of background of myself. Uh, I graduated from college in 1971. I then went uh, to the same school, Santa Clara, for law school, and I became a CPA following that. After practicing for a little while, I uh, formed a self-storage development firm, and uh, we developed uh, projects in five states and uh, ran them for several decades. They're now primarily sold, although I still own one uh, in Castro Valley, which is in the Bay Area, along 580. And uh, last year, we constructed three giant billboards uh, along that uh, frontage, the only billboards on the 580 freeway. Um, it's taken us federal action, federal court action, in order to get those uh, cemented in, and they deliver messages, six messages, one on each side, about um, one Bay Area, which I'll describe uh, in my talk as we move along. I live in Santa Cruz, California. I have five daughters, and um, um, I worry about the future of California. In my talk, I'm going to talk about um, three C's. I'm going to talk about the American, American condition, the American circumstance, and um, the American challenge. The American condition, there is amongst us a quiet local drive for globalization. It began with the federal, federal government in 1992 with George Bush signing the United Nations Agenda 21 PAC when he was at their conference in Rio de Janeiro. The following year, President Bill Clinton infused every federal agency with a primary duty, and that was the implementation of Agenda 21. The process has continued since then with every president, Democrat or Republican, without abatement. Today, Agenda 21 is firmly entrenched in every state government in the Union. You cannot move anywhere in the United States without Agenda 21 being the official policy of state government. And it is now in every local community. I'll give a good description of that when I describe the Bay Area in a few minutes. Agenda 21, as I think most of you know, is the effort to control how and where people live. That's called euphemistically smart growth. And every town brags about its smart growth policies. And that's the policy to put us in these urban centers and stack and pack buildings without automobiles. You say, what? Well, that is happening. In Chicago, the slums are being taken down. Mid-rise buildings are being constructed. They have no parking lots. They have no garages. In the Bay Area, El Camino Real, which is the major thoroughfare uh, between San Jose and San Francisco, is to be converted, not allowing any private cars, public transportation only, as that, that uh, forum is going to be rebuilt with stack and pack housing interspersed by um, major employers so that people can ride, can ride their bike to work or even walk to work. And that's the plan, not just for the Bay Area, but for the entire country. Smart growth and sustainable development, or Agenda 21, sustainable development and Agenda 21 are interchangeable terms, is designed for the whole country. And ultimately, there's to be 11 mega regions in the country where all the people, all 66 million of us, at least that's what America 2050 says, 66 million people will congregate in these 11 primary uh, mega cities. So well, what do you get the 66 million for? They're anticipating and they're planning a population reduction. People who survive that reduction are to live in these urban centers called mega cities. Agenda 21 is about the collectivization of property, of all property. Its goal is to create massive wildlands across the United States, wildlands where people will not be allowed to enter. 
That's why Montana is under such massive attack. There is not one of those 11 metropolitan areas located in Montana. There are three in California. It's designed to limit sustainable development. Agenda 21 is designed to limit a person's movement. If you want to know details about sustainable development, I would invite you to our website called Freedom 21. We, we developed this um, uh, website in the year 2000 and uh, worked it heavily in, through about 2013. And there you'll find all the basis, backgrounds, policies, and philosophies that drive the sustainable development in the 21 program. This is the program that has reshaped America. It is why Americans are unhappy with their government. It is why Americans are unhappy with the state of politics in this country. It is because our politics is being driven by the principles of sustainable development. And if the public doesn't know what sustainable development is, the public is at a tremendous loss. It is globalization, the creation of the international Agenda 21 policies for which we are um, challenged. I want to give a, an example of the implementation of Agenda 21. There aren't many people here from the San Francisco Bay Area I think other than myself and Debbie Bacigalupi, there was uh, one couple from San Jose, uh, from the Bay Area. There's someone there from the Bay Area. That's good. Well, people in the Bay Area need to know, and yet I'll, I'll imagine that, that um, probably 98, 99% of the people living in the Bay Area do not know about one Bay Area or planned Bay Area. And that's amazing because every city councilman or woman, every member of the Board of Supervisors in the nine counties of the San Francisco Bay Area do know about it. Because there is a, an organization called ABAG that has a new plan for the, for the rearrangement of the San Francisco Bay Area. How many people have heard of COGS, Councils of Government? Good. For those who haven't, councils of government are organizations that oversee local governments. The public does not know about COGS, much higher percentage of people he out here who know about them than in the public. But COGS are in every area, every inch of ground in America other than some, wild, some, some uh, government properties in the state of Montana actually. But aside from that, everywhere is within a COG. In the San Francisco Bay Area, the COG is called ABAG, the Association of Bay Area Governments. Now, ABAG consists of various individuals. Primarily, it consists of elected officials from city <laughs> government and county government. Now, they never advertise that they're members of ABAG. They just make the votes that make these things happen. Every member of a city council, every member of the Board of Supervisors knows about ABAG and they do what ABAG tells them. Well, here's what ABAG, as a model for the rest of the country, is telling the nine counties and 100 cities of the Bay Area. This program, by the way, is coming next to Los Angeles and the SCAG organization, the COG here, there is called SCAG, Southern California Area Governments. And, to, and, and next to the San Diego area, uh, the Sandbag Organization, which includes, which includes Tijuana. You see, the New World Order has no regard for national, na uh, natural, national boundaries. So ABAG is unelected and unaccountable for, too. Nobody knows it exists, and yet it has a plan that expends three hundred billion dollars for the remake of the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, how are they going to remake the San Francisco Bay Area? Well, it calls for priority development areas. A priority development area is an urban area with a transit center, you know, trains, buses, 
et cetera, not cars. And within a half mile of those transit areas, which are beginning to be built all around the Bay Area, is to include 80% of all <coughs> development within the next 40 years. That's 4% of the land mass of the Bay Area is to accommodate 80% of the growth so that people can use public transportation. So the key plan, the key element of the COG program, a key element, is to get people out of their automobiles, pure Agenda 21. It's to get people in stack and pack buildings so that they can be easily monitored and controlled. A bag is the first and perfected plan in the United States undertaken by a COG for the implementation of this program. A little bit more about COGs. Where do COGs come from and what are they? Well, COGs were developed in 1958 by Dwight Eisenhower. The purpose then was for the construction of the interstate highway. Well, the federal government had no responsibility no authority to construct an interstate highway system. So they created this system of COGS so that it could be localized in terms of the implementation of their, inter of their freeway program. But that has expanded and expanded over the decades uh, to where it is now, where it is now remaking our cities and creating a new world. They came to California under Ronald Reagan. Reagan brought COGS into California and the state has been the same since. And we're now going to, beginning now, feel the effects of COGS as they completely rearrange the nature of local government. We go from elected officials and city councils and board of supervisors <coughs> to shifting the power to an unelected, unaccountable form of government, a Soviet system called COGS that will forever change America if, if things proceed as they are now being planned. It is the destruction of free enterprise and private property. The goal of One Bay Area is a rising city-state with a UN seat in the offing. I'm going to play a video from a conference we put on a year ago in San Francisco called The Globalization of California. And what I'm going to show is some snippets of a speech made at uh, uh, joint Venture Silicon Valley, a globalist NGO that um, comprised of high-end participants. It's a very expensive conference to attend. The, um, you know, the major corporations of Silicon Valley are the major players of this organization, and they brought in a futurist as their keynote speaker who delivered the following comments about One Bay Area. I'm going to show you something from last year's joint venture Silicon Valley Conference, which was held on the peninsula uh, in February of last year. Their keynote speaker was a man named Paul Sappho, who's a consulting associate professor at Stanford University and a board member of the Bay Area Economic uh, Institute, which is, a, which is a subsidiary of the Bay Area Council, the, the regional that I just showed you in the last board. He's speaking on the future. He's, he calls himself a futurist. And I don't know what you do to call yourself a futurist. But this futurist talks about regionalizing the Bay Area. We saw a snip from him earlier. I just want to show pieces of his talk once again. The real nexus of power in this century is moving from nation states to city states. California, or the Bay Area, is a good example. City-states, both de facto, de jure, legally recognized city-states with you know, seats at the United Nations like Singapore, and also de facto city-states, powerful regions, are the new basic unit of governance in the 21st century. They are, to this century, what the nation-state was to the last. City-states are the powerful nexus of economy, commerce, culture, and identity. So what about our Bay Area? Well, I think we actually already are a city-state. We just need to acknowledge it. With that in mind, note that 
nations don't disappear. And they're not going to disappear in this century replaced by city-states. But now regions and city-states in particular will hold the power. So we're a city-state. We should act like it. We need to go a step further and say it's time to start thinking about boundary drops between counties. Why should you only be thinking about mergers between cities in the same county? And of course, we need to merge cities. We have too many cities in the Bay Area. We talk about the Bay Area as nine counties. I think that's too small. It turns out that city-states derive their power from the hinterlands they're associated with. Hong Kong's power comes from being at the bottom of the Pearl River Delta. Singapore is at the mouth of the Straits of Malacca. A big part, you know, Silicon Valley isn't this thing dropped here by an alien spacecraft that has no relations with the people over the hill. They're very much part of our economy. Look at this map. Why don't we include Santa Cruz as part of the Bay Area? You know, what about San Joaquin Valley? I mean, the people who work in Silicon Valley, you know, they sleep there for heaven's sake. You know, we should think about expanding this notion of what the Bay Area city-state looks like. This image is a reminder that in a world where we shift from nation-state to city-state and the power shifts going on, the border simply does not want to exist. The new order is not about shifting boundaries. It's about dissolving boundaries. One thing I can tell you with certainty, Tijuana does not want to become American, and San Diego does not want to become Mexican. Rather, they just want to be one region undistracted by national governments and people who are interfering with economic growth, educational opportunity, and social progress. The same things that we want here. I've used the term Soviet several times in this conversation. Well, that was Paul Sappho. That was a very distinguished audience he was speaking to, you know, high-end people from Silicon Valley. And um, those who think they want to live in the Bay Area need to give a second thought to what floor they want to live on the 22nd or the 32nd floor of the high-rise when they, when they get on their public transit to get to wherever they want to go, or I should say, wherever public transit wants you to go. Now, we had, have at Freedom Advocates a lawsuit against ABAG that's currently uh, pending before the courts over ABAG. That suit is um, funded and chronicled uh, at globalizationofcalifornia.com. And so anybody who wants to review that lawsuit, particularly from Los Angeles or, or San Diego, so they can get ready for your own assault. Um, I invite you to, to do that. Um, I can tell you that uh, we lost at trial, no surprise there. You know, most of these state court judges are, you know, you couldn't hire better military guys to just do what the, the forces above them tell them to do. You know, Jerry Brown, of course, is a giant fan of sustainable development in Agenda 21 as a regular speak, speaker at UN conferences on this subject. And, um, so we lost at uh, trial. We're now on appeal. We know it's going to end up at one or both of the Supreme Courts. And so we will look for, and anybody who comes to Globalization California, we'd like you to consider contributing to um, that further litigation uh, appeal that we'll be making. Now, LA is, and San Diego, as I said, are the next to be cogged with this new system of government. People in those two areas need to wake up or they're going to fall into the trap that the Bay Area is in. You know, the unfortunate part is if you talk to a Bay Area person about what I've just told you, they'll have no idea. All of our newspapers are owned by the same um, hedge fund in Chicago. They all report the same news, and none of them has ever reported about one Bay Area. Nobody even knows COGS exist. We're being duped and being duped the hardest in the San Francisco Bay Area. I would recommend uh, anyone interested, in fact, I have some copies if someone wants to acquire them, 
um, of our conference. We held in Treasure Island in San Francisco last year on the One Bay Area subject, three DVDs and a one-day conference. Um, Debbie Bacigalupi, myself, Rosa Corey, Pat Wood, and uh, Heather Goss were the speakers. We had three elected uh, officials, one from Southern California, one from Central California, and one from the Bay Area who also spoke. And so it's a, a wonderful accumulation of um, circumstances and facts that can help every American understand what's coming their way. You know, the COGS don't just exist in California. This plan for globalization in the way I've described the Bay Area is not just set for California. This is a national assault that will be firmly embedded in California because as California goes, so goes the rest of the country. So people need to watch what's happening here because it's coming to you wherever you are. <coughs> now the American circumstance, we're facing an emerged world political economic order that seeks to change humanity while advancing new concepts that include, one, the nature of money. Consider Jim Rickard's book, The Death of Money, or Pat Wood's even more disturbing, Technocracy Rising. I have a few copies of this if people are interested. Uh, Technocracy Rising describes um, the scientific dictatorship that Wood so eloquently weaves in and shows how an idea that emerged in America in the 1930s called technocracy has re-emerged. Um, people like Leonard um, Rosinski um, furthered this in his book Between Two Tectonic Eras. Uh, he talks about technocracy. Technocracy is the idea that scientific dictatorship takes over and that money gets converted into electrical credits, energy credits, that people are entitled to for 30 days. You do, you do what, the, what the man wants you to do for 30 days, you can still live because you get your energy credits to trade for, for a place to live and for food, etc. And if you don't do what they want you to do, you don't get your month's allocation of energy credits. That's a scary world. But we all know that the monetary system we have today isn't going to last, maybe not much longer. The, the second um, uh, circumstance is the changing meaning of national boundaries. We saw an example of it here, but we certainly all know and can all recognize from our day-to-day -day life how it is that national boundaries um, are weakening. They're gone in Europe, and, and in North America, it does not seem that the boundary between Mexico and the United States has much effect anymore. And the third element that I'd point to is America's abandonment of the political recognition of natural law. That's the basis of the founding of America, was a belief in natural law, a law from a higher power that supersedes what man can make in Washington, D.C., and today, courts the public, academia, have no regard, no understanding of natural law. If we cannot resume our understanding of that concept, we have no chance to revitalize America. Because that's what America was. The idea that an individual has the right and the opportunity to a life of his own. Today, you got a big, thick code you've got to follow regulations that are even thicker, all brought to us by the man in the legislature. So consider the state of the crumbling paper currencies, beginning with the U.S. dollar, the rise of multinational trade packs, TPP must be rejected. The specific mess at America's southern borders, just who is crossing? What risk does that bring upon us? And the unabating and accelerating attack on private property, including smart growth living. Imagine, global war is looming. Global governance is the goal of those who seek war. 
There is a need for American objectivity. We need new politicians. We need them now. The American challenge is to restore the principles of the Declaration of Independence. It is to restore the concept of individualism to this country, and it is to corral collectivism. This is a monumental challenge. Most of our present leaders are inept, or worse. Now is the time. The primary battle is local. Some towns are already lost. The question is, what can you do? It is time for real Americans to take over city hall and county boards of supervisors. Freedom cannot wait much longer. Thank you.